Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel. Today we'll examine various configurations of latching circuits as implemented by the Tico SG2 PLR and the Tico SG2 client programming software. Our objective is to examine PLC-based latching, holding, seal-in, or memory circuits that maintain or remember the last asserted state, making use of virtual relays, software-generated holding instructions, and set reset commands, allowable by the Tico SG2 PLR an inexpensive basic PLC. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch both the Tico SG2 client programming software and virtual relays and holding circuits lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, while well, I dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, if you've got a copy of the freely available fully functional Tico SG2 client programming software on hand, by all means, fire it up and follow along. Given you should be familiar with the aforementioned content, this lecture should be a relatively smooth and painless tour of how the Tico SG2 PLR client programming software implements various configurations of holding circuits and a chance to simulate and test their functionality. For the purposes of this lecture, let's assume we're making use of a PLC configured in the following fashion. Note the schematic indicates there is a normally open maintain contact selector switch on input 1, a normally closed momentary contact red push button on input 2, a normally open momentary contact green push button on input 3, and a normally open momentary contact yellow push button on input 4. The remaining inputs are unused. Outputs Q1 to Q4 selectively energize or de-energize pilot lamps. Let's first examine holding circuits made possible through the use of virtual relays. The Tico SG2 PLR has two types of virtual relays called non-retentive auxiliary relays that do not maintain the status of the coil and associated instructions at power off, signified by an M, and retentive auxiliary relays that do maintain the status of the coil and associated instructions at power off, signified by an N. Using the Tico SG2 PLR client programming software, we can create a holding circuit by using a non-retentive auxiliary relay and its associated instructions in the following fashion. Note the comment section indicates we're using the normally closed momentary contact red push button for input 2, the normally open momentary contact green push button for input 3, and the first pilot lamp for output Q1. Rung 1 is a series configuration of a make instruction examining input I2, the normally closed red push button, and another make instruction examining input I3, the normally open green push button, controlling the coil of a non-retentive auxiliary relay, M1. Rung 2 is a make instruction examining M1 in parallel with a make instruction examining input I3 in Rung 1. Rung 3 is a make instruction also examining M1 in series with output Q1. One can see how the programmed instructions in a PLC closely mimic a three-wire holding circuit as implemented in traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic using a real relay. Using the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility, let's examine the behavior of this program in response to simulated field input devices in various actuation states. Note the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility default start state assumes the electromechanical nature of all switched input devices is normally open. Before initiating simulation, one must toggle the simulated field input device attached to input I2 to closed to more accurately reflect our as-built system. In the deactivated state, the make instruction examining I2 permits logical continuity. However, the make instruction examining I3 does not permit logical continuity onto the coil of auxiliary relay M1. The make instructions examining auxiliary relay M1 in both rungs 2 and 3 do not permit logical continuity and output Q1 remains de-energized. When the simulated field input device on input 3 is closed, the make instruction examining I3 now permits logical continuity onto auxiliary relay M1. The coil of auxiliary relay M1 is energized. The make instructions examining auxiliary relay M1 in both rungs 2 and 3 permit logical continuity and simultaneously establish a holding circuit and energize output Q1. When the simulated field input device on input 3 reopens, the make instruction examining I3 no longer permits logical continuity. However, the make instruction examining M1 still permits logical continuity onto the coil of auxiliary relay M1, and the coil of auxiliary relay M1 remains energized. The make instruction examining M1 in rung 3 continues to permit logical continuity, and output Q1 remains energized. The auxiliary relay and its associated instruction have thus allowed this system to maintain the last asserted state as would a traditional hardwired holding contact. When the simulated field input device on input 2 is open, the make instruction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the rest of the rung, and the coil of auxiliary relay M1 is de-energized. 
The May constructions examining auxiliary relay M1 in both rungs 2 and 3 do not permit logical continuity, which simultaneously breaks the holding circuit and de-energizes output Q1. Reclosing the simulated field input device on input 2 returns the system to the deactivated ready state. This simulation verifies the behavior of a simple holding circuit made possible by an auxiliary relay as implemented using the Tico SG2 client programming software. When the program is downloaded to a target device, note the subtle formatting difference between the programming software and that employed by the actual device. When the system is placed into operation, note when an operator presses and releases the normally open green push button on input 3, the first pilot light turns on and stays on as we'd expect. When an operator presses and releases the normally closed red push button at input 2, the holding circuit is broken and the first pilot light turns off and stays off as we'd expect. Let's now examine holding circuits made possible through the use of software-generated output instructions. Using the Tico SG2 client programming software, we can create a holding circuit by incorporating a software-generated make instruction examining output Q1 on rung 2. You find almost identical behavior as previously, however this program does so utilizing less rungs and as a result the program uses proportionally less memory. Allow me to demonstrate. Rung 1 is a series configuration of a make instruction examining input I2 the normally closed red push button, and another make instruction examining input I3, the normally open green push button, controlling output Q1. Rung 2 is a make instruction examining output Q1 in parallel with a make instruction examining input I3 in rung 1. This is the software-generated holding contact, almost directly mimicking the function of an auxiliary contact and an electromechanical contact are used for holding circuit purposes. One can see how using this alternative, more streamlined approach, the program is ever so slightly smaller. Using the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility, let's examine the behavior of this program in response to simulated field input devices in various actuation states. Note that Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility default start state assumes the electromechanical nature of all switched input is normally open. Before initiating the simulation, one must toggle the simulated field input device attached to input 2 to closed to more accurately reflect our as-built system. In the deactivated state, the make instruction examining input I2 permits logical continuity, however the make instruction examining input I3 does not permit logical continuity onto output Q1. The make instruction examining Q1 in rung 2 also does not permit logical continuity, and output Q1 remains de-energized. When the simulated field input device on input 3 is closed, the make instruction examining I3 now permits logical continuity onto output Q1. Output Q1 is energized and the make instruction examining Q1 in rung 2 establishes a holding circuit. When the simulated field input device on input 3 reopens, the make instruction examining I3 no longer permits logical continuity. However, the make instruction examining Q1 still permits logical continuity onto the output. Output Q1 remains energized. This software generated holding instruction has thus allowed the system to maintain the last asserted state as would a traditional hardwired holding contact. When the simulated field input device on input 2 is open, the make instruction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the rest of the rung, and output Q1 is de-energized. The make instruction examining output Q1 in rung 2 does not permit logical continuity and breaks the holding circuit. Reclosing the simulated field input device on input 2 returns this system to the deactivated ready state. The simulation verifies the behavior of a simple holding circuit made possible by a software-generated output instruction as implemented using the Tico SG2 client programming software. When the program is downloaded to a target device, note the subtle formatting difference between the programming software and that employed by the actual device. When the system is placed into operation, note when an operator presses and releases the normally open green push button at input 3, the first pilot light turns on and stays on as we'd expect. When an operator presses and releases the normally closed red push button at input 2, the holding circuit is broken and the first pilot light turns off and stays off as we'd expect. Outwardly, the behavior of this program is identical to our previous implementation, only it takes less lines of code to do so. Yet another method of creating streamlined holding circuits exists for the Tico SG2 PLR. This method makes use of set and reset coils, which differ from traditional output enable instructions in that a single output can be placed in one of two mutually exclusive states, either set or reset, and once in that particular state, the PLC will maintain this condition until such time that the opposite state is asserted. Set, if you want to think of it this way, can be thought of as a command that, when asserted, energizes an output and keeps it energized. Similarly, reset can be thought of as a command that, when asserted, de-energizes an output and keeps it de-energized. The states set and reset are to be considered mutually exclusive and that both states cannot be simultaneously achieved. 
it is assumed that the reset state has priority, and if faulty logic or some odd condition simultaneously tries to assert both states, the output will remain de-energized until such time that the conflict is resolved. Additionally, good practices preclude the use of multiple set conditions within the same program, which may yield undesirable behavior. To make use of a set coil in the Tico SG2 client programming software, one must select set when placing an output in a program. Here, rung 1 contains a make instruction examining input I3, the normally open green push button in series with the set function for output Q1. The Tico SG2 client programming software symbolizes a set using an upwards pointing arrow. Not all manufacturers use this particular shorthand notation. Next, one sort of break instruction examining input I2, the normally closed red push button on rung 2. One must select break when placing this instruction in the program. Note the Tico SG2 client programming software symbolizes a break function using lowercase letters. Not all manufacturers use this particular shorthand notation. Similarly, to make use of a reset coil in the Tico SG2 client programming software, one must select reset when placing an output in the program. The completed rung 2 contains a break instruction examining input I2, the normally closed red push button, in series with a reset function for output Q1. The Tico SG2 client programming software symbolizes a set using a downwards pointing arrow. Not all manufacturers use this particular shorthand notation. You note that the break instruction in this scenario is necessary since the electromechanical nature of the field input device attached to input I2 is normally closed. You recall that the break instruction is essentially the opposite of the make instruction and that a break instruction disallows logical continuity when input I2 experiences a logical one the deactivated normally closed state of the red push button, and allows logical continuity when input I2 experiences a logical zero, the activated held open state of the red push button. The break instruction allows the reset condition to be asserted only when an operator actively holds the normally closed red push button open. In contrast, the logic in rung 1 using the make instruction examining input I3 allows the set condition to be asserted only when an operator holds the normally open green push button closed. One can see how using this alternative set reset approach, the program is ever so slightly easier to understand. The logic in rung 1 energizes the output and keeps it energized. The logic in rung 2 de-energizes the output and keeps it de-energized. Using the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility, let's examine the behavior of this program in response to simulated field input devices in various actuation states. Note the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility default start state assumes the electromechanical nature of all switched input is normally open. Before initiating the simulation, one must toggle the simulated field input device attached to input 2 to closed to more accurately reflect our as-built system. In the deactivated ready state, note the simulator initiates operation with output Q1 de-energized. The make instruction examining input I3 does not permit logical continuity to the set instruction of Q1. Additionally, the break instruction examining input I2 does not permit logical continuity to the reset instruction of Q1. Since output Q1 is neither being set nor reset, output Q1 remains in the de-energized condition. When the simulated field input device on input 3 is closed, the make instruction examining input I3 permits logical continuity onto the set instruction of Q1. Output Q1 is energized, and given it was energized via the set instruction, Rather than a normal output enable instruction, it will remain energized until instructed otherwise. Note the Tico SG2 client programming software simulator utility indicates both instantiations of output Q1 are highlighted in green. This symbolizes that output Q1 is in the energized state. When the simulated field input device on input I3 is reopened, the make instruction examining input I3 no longer permits logical continuity onto the set instruction. However, Output Q1 remains set in the energized condition as symbolized by the highlighted condition. The set instruction has thus allowed this system to maintain the last asserted state as would a traditional hardwired holding contact without the time-consuming necessity of physically rewiring it or programming it yourself. When the simulated field input device on input I2 is opened, the break instruction examining input I2 permits logical continuity onto the reset instruction of Q1. Output Q1 is de-energized, and given it was de-energized via the reset instruction, rather than normal output enable instruction, it will remain de-energized until instructed otherwise. When the simulated field input device on input 2 is reclosed, this system returns to the deactivated ready state with output Q1 de-energized. This simulation verifies the behavior of a simple holding circuit made possible by set and reset coils, 
as implemented using the Tico SG2 client programming software. When the program is downloaded to a target device, note the subtle formatting differences between the programming software and that employed by the actual device. Note the set and reset commands are respectively upwards and downwards pointing arrows, and the break command examining input I2 and rung 2 is written in lower case. Not all manufacturers use this particular shorthand notation. When the system is placed into operation, note that when an operator presses and releases the normally open green push button on input 3, the first pilot light turns on and stays on as we'd expect. When an operator presses and releases the normally closed red push button on input 2, the holding circuit is broken and the first pilot light turns off and stays off as we'd expect. Outwardly, the behavior of this program is identical to our two previous implementations, only the program is ever so slightly easier to read. All right, that about wraps up this brief demonstration of holding circuits made possible using auxiliary relays, software-generated output instructions, and set reset coils offered by the Tico SG2 PLR and the Tico SG2 client programming software. While we didn't unveil any startling new revelations, we did gain exposure to how one particular manufacturer implements these techniques and got an opportunity to practice programming and simulation, as well as observe the behavior of a latching program in operation. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.